Now, you just talked about killings, including another one today. And, of course, this targeted attack comes days after Delhi shootings in Johannesburg. Could this also be in any way linked to each other? Um... As I just said a few minutes ago, you have uh, different taxi associations. Well structured, just like you have in Nigeria, are well policed. You have separate bodies that, that police uh, uh, the associations and the conduct of the associations. Um, so the, the taxi killings, uh, um, it's usually the root issue. Are you using my route? Sometimes some people get into trouble where they're trying to avoid traffic and they encroach on other people's routes. Um, so sometimes you're caught, you're told no, or they actually offload people from those taxis. But most of the time is the root issue. But the way guns just get pulled out and, uh, and the taxi operators get killed is alarming. At a point, a few months back, I remember one of the NECs, that's like equivalent of a commissioner, had to shut down a taxi ramp because of the violence. A number of people were killed. I'm not quite sure, about four or five people were killed. Uh, during that incident. But we see that uh, in KwaZulu-Natal mostly, we see that here as, uh, in Gauteng as well. So um, it's the root issue and um, probably some other things that we don't know. Uh, what about the authorities now? Are they saying anything about the issue or have they been able to get any motive for this dastardly act? At this point, no. Um, the National Police Commissioner, uh, Ketla, General Ketla Sitole, he's activated the Specialized Investigation uh, Unit to, to trace and, and um, arrest the people who may have carried out this act, and he's given them 72 hours. We have, we have the uh, Police Portfolio Committee of Parliament saying that the, cri cri uh, the taxi violence in the country has reached a crisis level, so that it should be a more multi-sectoral uh, strategy to, to bring it to an end because innocent people are, are being killed and uh, people are actually scared where nobody knows where it's going to erupt apart from the taxi runs. Um, there's general condemnation. The, the, the transport minister, Dr. Bladen Zimandi, has spoken and they've drilled out some of the things that they're going to be doing. But uh, if you have any effect, we're hoping you will have. We know that in 2016, especially in KwaZulu-Natal, there was something called the a Special Taxi Violence uh, Task Team, you know, to curb the, the violent incidents. Whether they've had any effect, um, I, 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 I can't really say, because uh, the violence has continued. And maybe now that this is like so glaring and, and you have a, an increased number of people being affected, probably uh, some things will change. We hope that things do change. Channels TV, South Africa Bureau Chief Betty Dibia, thanks for this update. Now elsewhere, Islamist militant group Al-Shabaab has claimed responsibility for an attack on a military base in southern Somalia. At least 27 soldiers have been killed after a suicide car bomb was detonated as gunmen opened fire on the base in Bar Sanguni, about 50 kilometers away from the port city of Kismayu. Officials say the attack began just after early morning prayers. Residents of the town of Jamame, 70 kilometers away from Kismayu, said they heard the blast, followed by gunfire. Last month, the jihadist group targeted a military base in the same area, killing an American soldier and injuring four others. And in Kenya, at least 12 students have been rushed to the hospital just 24 hours after another fire broke out at a school in the Rift Valley. The Highway Secondary School in Nairobi is the latest to be closed down due to a fire. More than 40 schools across the country have been affected by fires during the current examination. Now, some are thought to have been started by students protesting against educational reforms, including a crackdown on examination cheating. The Chinese President Xi Jinping is in Africa on a four-nation visit, seeking deeper military and economic ties. This is Mr. Xi's first trip abroad since he was appointed to a second term in March with term limits removed, allowing him to rule for as long as he wants. China is already Africa's largest trading partner, opened its first military base on the continent last year in the Horn of Africa nation of Djibouti. 
As Africa Visit highlights China's sweeping Belt and Road Initiative that envisages linking Beijing to Africa, Europe and other parts of Asia via a network of ports, railways, power and planned economic zones. While such high-profile projects bring the badly needed infrastructure in the country and generate economic growth, U.S. officials and others warn that African nations are putting themselves into debt to China. Now, joining us to talk more about this is the CEO of Kauri Assets Management Limited and an economist, Johnson Chuku. Thanks for joining us, Mr. Chuku. Now, what are your thoughts on the Chinese president in Africa seeking deeper military and economic ties? Well, I think what the Chinese are doing now is to further strengthen the relations we have with Africa. China has been very active in African infrastructure development. What they now want to do is to have a share of the heart. Um, we did visit that got a cut for African countries. Um, the Chinese president, uh, President Xi Jinping, we end up building a kind of personal relation with the African economies. It started, started from Senegal uh, through uh, Rwanda and now the South Africa and eventually Mauritius. Um, basically, it's now going beyond the issue of infrastructure and military base. It's now getting to a point where there is a relation between China and Africa is going to be at a, at a professional level where the African president or heads of state will be able to reach to the Chinese government that can relate with them beyond the fact that China is about the African trade for that development. Now, China is Africa's largest trading partner, overtaking the United States nearly a decade ago. But some analysts say this could be China solidifying its grip on the continent. Do you agree with that? Absolutely. Um, that's what I said. That the, what the Chinese president is doing is a share of the heart beyond a share of the infrastructure and a share of the raw material coming from Africa. Um, unfortunately for the U.S., they have actually, actually lost that position. If you recall, the U.S. was a natural partner to African countries. Africa, they granted scholarship to African citizens. They, we are our strongest trade partners until China has now upturned that. And the Chinese are also approaching us, not just from a point of giving us infrastructure, they have established a military like the point that I on Africa in GPT. Uh, today, there's no part of what the best as much in Africa as China is doing. So, uh, with the visit, the relationship is now going beyond commercial business now. And that will be difficult for any other country, or for particular US, to, uh, to counter once there's that level of personal relationship between China and African leaders. Well, many thanks, Mr. Johnson Chuku. Mr. Johnson Chuku is the CEO of Kari Assets Management Limited and an economist. Thanks for your time. Now, still to come on the program, Egyptian artist draws tiny portraits of celebrity actors and sports stars on chewing gum. Please stay with us.